Country music, man. Everybody knows it, and there are quite a few people who hate it. I hate country music. You and me both, bro. I love all music except for country. Meanwhile, for some people, it's a way of life. And I love country music. Well, it's all about the country lifestyle. Why is this? And more importantly, why should you care? Well, if you don't care, don't worry, because uh, this video isn't actually about country music. I mean, don't get me wrong, we'll still have a bit of Charlie Pride and Chicken Fried, but uh, this is more a video about all of those big things that you want to do with your life and you've wanted to do them for a long time, but for whatever reason you still haven't gotten around to doing them. Basically, what I'm trying to do via the banjo is answer a big question that I think we've all asked ourselves at one point or another. Why do we pursue some goals, but abandon others? All right. Enough of the banjo, it must be annoying by now. Also, massive thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this. More on them later. For now, here's the dream that I gave up on. One, two, three. When I was just a baby, my mama I'm making a country song, and look, all pretenses aside, I know what I look like. More cocaine than I do cowboy. But I'm doing this because my love for country runs deep. I have wanted to make country music ever since I heard the second verse of Johnny Cash's Folsom Prison Blues. It's the third line where he says I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. I hang my head and cry. The way I see that line now is like a nightmare in three acts. Act one, you've got this very vivid murder. Act two, you've got this motive. It's so cruel but so self-aware that it's almost charming. Then act three is the aftertaste. It's where you realise that the joke is on you. The thing that really dies, it's not the guy in Reno. It's your integrity, it's what you knew about yourself because when you really listen to that lyric on some level, deep down, there's a part of you that is cheering for the killer and all for a reason no more complex than his. Johnny Cash just sounds so damn cool. I was 12 and it was the first time that a lyric gave me the feeling. I'm sure you know the feeling. You know when a creative work just sets your head on fire and you end up transcending time and space? I've spent a lot of my life seeking out that feeling in all sorts of stuff. Books, movies, illustration, and out of convenience, but also as an in-joke, I've started referring to those moments with this goofy name. I call it the Astral Yeehaw. Astral, because you leave this earth, and Yeehaw as a tribute to Johnny Cash and that gut punch he gave me as a 12-year-old. As anybody who seeks out this feeling knows, you also become a little bit obsessed with trying to make it. And I'm no exception. I like writing, I like drawing, I like making documentaries. But even though this obsession with Astral Yeehaw has begun with Johnny Cash, it's been 20 years and I'm still yet to make a country song. But that all ends today. How? I got like half a plan? Meet Adam. Um. <laughs> my so-called half a plan. Adam lives in a one-bedroom cabin in the middle of nowhere. His roommate is Penny the Spider. The, uh, the Byron Echo, local paper. People leave him out in the sun, pinching off people's driveways. It's all good. I don't read this shit anyway. They suck from the bottle and fill up He's got a big old heart, a tramp stamp that says cruise control, and the voice of an angel. If that angel had just drunk a gallon of gravel. The last time we hung out, I gave him a matching tattoo. It's of Mulk from The Simpsons. I like this about Adam. He feels like an arm wrestle between impulsivity and soul. All wrapped up with a ratty and a mandolin. I don't know, he's just a freaking good guy to be around. Now, Adam has sung a lot about the dumb decisions he's made, but the choice he made a week ago is what I would call his dumbest decision to date. One of the things that's on my bucket list, and this has been on my bucket list for a long, long, long time, is to write and record a country song. And uh, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yep, a world-class country musician and me. So we hit the road all the way to the northern rivers of New South Wales where Adam's cabin was located. Totally off-grid and totally beautiful, man. That's the telly. This is the lounge room. This is my kitchen. This is the house. Where's this the is lovely, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, we start jamming. Maybe just put your hand over it or something. What's that? <laughs> Which quickly turned into a chat on how to actually make a country hit. Like, we can write a bunch of songs. Yeah. I might have stuff, but I'm just... Right now, I'm thinking of a hit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I told Adam about the astral yeehaw and my dream of capturing it in a hit song. Adam told me that sometimes a hit song is as simple as a collection of hit elements. 
It's stuff we all know. Things like verses, a big old bridge, a chorus, the instruments, a three minute 40 runtime, and a whole bunch of other stuff that didn't fit on the chessboard. With that in mind, we started. My brain don't work no more, novelty now makes me sore and I feel... That's pre-chorus. That's the bridge. The chorus will be like F, A minor. Take it away. We could be rockers with it and be like... I'm not a fighter, but I'm not as young as the fight's discovering me. <laughs> Then never hit him with a one two. Oh my god, yeah. Can I sting like, like a wing? And I sing like We had written the song, and it ticked all the boxes, verses, choruses, and a calculated three minute forty runtime. Hell, we even played it for our friends. I mean, listen, you're about to hear the sound of beautiful, supportive people. But you're also about to hear the truth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can hear it, right? That realization in my voice? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I knew we didn't have it. We had a song, but we didn't have the song. In bed, I replayed the day, and I realized what was missing. That feeling. You know the one. The astral yeehaw. And why? I wasn't sure. But when I'm lost like this, I usually turn towards the light. The blue light of my phone, that is. My wife and daughter were asleep, and I was wide awake in a Wikipedia hole, desperate to find an answer to the question, what even is a country song? A lot of people, infinitely smarter than me, have tried to answer this question. And generally, they usually start with stylistic roots. The African origins. Blues, gospel, jazz, and even some of the instruments. The banjo, for example, I recently learned is actually a descendant of West African lutes, which were made from gourds. Combine that with a couple of instruments and instrumental influences from Europe and the Mediterranean basin, and now we add the Appalachian migration. Yep, it's the giddy up factor. Think folk songs, and folk songs that borrow from Celtic songwriting sensibilities. And let's not forget where they are. The geographic backdrop cannot be understated here. The beautiful vastness of North America. You've got indigenous American influences everywhere. Plus there's Tejano, Creole, Cajun, New Mexico, Hawaiian, and a million more things. And eventually in 1922, you wind up with what is arguably the first ever commercial recording of quote unquote country music. <laughs> There's something so cool about this song. But yeah, if that's the origins list, as you can imagine, it is then followed by an even bigger list of everything country music became. People like to cite like six or seven generations of country and all of the genres it spawned, the genres it fused with, like psychedelic country or hip hop country, its critiques, its power, its personalities, from Woody Guthrie and Patsy Klein to Taylor Swift and Lil Nas X. And to my delight, there is also a bunch of overdue praise for the genius of Shania Twain. It was around here that I passed out with my phone on my face. It's a good look for me. But I woke up feeling fine. I think having a baby is maybe kind of impervious to shitty sleep. But it hasn't made me impervious to the fact that our song didn't have that feeling. I was light years from Astral Yeehaw. So what was missing? Was it just the other instruments? Remember I was saying that like, you know, a good song's always gonna be a good song. And a good song should be a good song just you singing it with a guitar. Subtext, I was wrong. So what was the problem? Anyone can put a bunch of cool words together and like, you know, country chords aren't hard. They're all the same chords, so anyone can write a country song. I've done that, tick. But whether or not I believe it, that's the crux of being good as, as opposed to being great or like, as just doing something, you know what I mean? The difference between good and great is believability. Adam said he had learned this from experience and not the good kind would write the songs and think I knew what the songs were, but like, I don't know what those songs meant until like, you know, later in my life. You're almost cosplaying as somebody who's more emotionally mature. 100%, you know, and you're just like recycling what's been done before and passing it off as a country song. What do you think the switch was for you in your own writing? Because you were saying that once upon a time where the feelings you were trying on for size, but now when you listen to your music, I mean, it's brutally honest. 
What changed? I think I, I, I just, I just went and fucking lived for a bit, you know. I think I was like kind of cosplaying the folk artists, and I guess I, I just went out and fucking got my heart broken, you know. <laughs> I went out and broke some hearts. I did some questionable things and thought a lot about them and made the songs believable. So this gave me hope. Not because I could suddenly write a country song, but because I know that I have definitely done some questionable things. Which presents a new problem. I've got a lot of mistakes, over-indexed, arguably. How do I turn them into music? Good thing I knew exactly who to ask. Ruby. So who is Ruby? Well, Ruby and Adam play in a band together. Ruby Fields. God-tier lyrics and stories set to music that blends pub rock, punk and the best parts of country. Their debut album hit number one in Australia. From the moment you discover them, they're the kind of band that feels like your friends. Your old friends, your good friends, the kind of friends who don't judge you and just love you for who you are. It was part coincidence and part mutual fascination that led to Ruby and I meeting. And since our first dumb, drunken chat all those years ago, we knew we'd be friends for life. <laughs> we have made a lot of the same mistakes. In fact, we've made a lot of the same mistakes together. Fuck. One night before I was sober, when somebody had done a lot of drugs for us, I think it was us, she asked me in all earnest if I would tattoo her knuckles right then and there. And I was like, Ruby, of course. Now the next morning we wake up both feeling like shit. I vomit, but she writes a song about it. How? From where I am now, what are three things that I should master or get into? And it can be more than three. It can't be less though. It's a really lame answer, but I've heard you sing and play guitar and I've read your lyrics. So I don't know what I can tell you to improve on. And that's a real shitty, lazy answer, but I don't know anything that you could learn that I could tell you to do. Do you know what I mean? But you're the famous musician and I'm me. There is a difference. I couldn't tell you what that is because in ways I feel like we're both performers and we're both appreciators of art and music. So what, what is the difference between you and me? Ruby was right. That was a really lame answer. But she had left me with that big question. What was the difference between her and I? So I took a step back from the songwriting process. I felt like I was hitting a wall. And sometimes for me, the best solution to a problem is just to stop working on it for a bit. I turned my focus to a place where finding the feeling wasn't so hard. Drawing and words. My objective was to figure out the band name by testing some ideas that we've been kicking around. Oh, we got the smellies, the ratty milks, my road truckers, pilk, Pepsi and milk. A lot of rat names here because there was a dead rat underneath Adam's house. I might, I might try draw the Joan Cusack tribute band. So what I'm doing here is experimentation. Drawing helps me figure out if a name feels cool, but it also shows me if the name can be used as merch on our Shopify store, who incidentally is our sponsor. What I like about Shopify is it helps me to monetize my creativity, which means I can fund my dreams with my dreams. And if you'd like to too, then yeah, have a listen, man. What I've done is I've created a tab on my own Shopify website called Fake Band Merch. And for all of these designs, I'm creating a shirt. This top spot is reserved for the actual band name, but I also like the runners up, so they can have their own shirts too. Probably worth mentioning that my knowledge of HTML peaked when I made my MySpace cursor into a sparkling dinosaur. And yet I can still make this. Code free, baby. But yeah, Shopify. There's plugins that make the site look legit, books, your spreadsheets, customer emails, and I can use this to sell online, offline, social media, everywhere. So if you are an entrepreneur, or if you're looking to make band merch, or if you've got some ideas and you want to sell them in a shop setting, like we are at struthless.com, which has, yes, the fake band merch, then do check out Shopify. There's a link in the description for a free trial, shopify.com forward slash struthless. And then maybe a sad face on the O. Something like that, that would look kind of cool in a truck hat. This is so shit, but this is literally how I ideate. So before, before you judge me for my childish drawings, here are some nice drawings I've done. See, I can draw, <laughs> kind of, not really actually. That is so bad. Dude, dude, it will be good, it will be good, man. I feel a lot easier, I gotta say, drawing than I do not drawing. <laughs> I don't know. I actually did know. The solution, it was right in front of me. And 
It even came with a name. I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him. I reckon I got it. I reckon I got it. How do I call them? Ruby Fields. You have reached the message bank. Of Ruby did not pick up. Hello. Adam, it's Cam. Cam, what's going on, dog? Dude, I think I cracked the band name. Oh, hear me. Okay. Astral Yeehaw and the Hiccups. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Quick refresher on how my dumb head works. I give stupid little names to feelings. I don't know why, I just do. As you'll recall, a transcendent moment in a piece of art in my head gets called an astral yeehaw. The flow state gets called the pocket zone, sudden realizations about how everything is connected get called a bubble, and mistakes get called hiccups. So hopefully this makes sense. This pocket zone had just become a serious bubble about hiccups. Mistakes are the path to creativity. I know this when I draw, but when I picked up that mandolin, I forgot that big important lesson. The less open you are to failure, the less open you are to success. It's the common thread that I see in every artist that I love. They truly adore experimentation. And I feel it the most when someone embraces a hiccup, a mistake, as a new idea. My favorite example of this is in a Dolly Parton song. It's called, Do I Ever Cross Your Mind? In the version she did with Chet Aitkins at around the 50 second mark, Dolly, while singing about heartbreak, giggles. <laughs> Now, she didn't intend for that giggle, and when she remade the song later, it's not there. But for me, in that version, it is a hiccup so perfect that it is the astral yeehaw. You just start out and I'll follow you. We'll just kind of figure out some... To me, it's the holy grail of creativity when the mistake becomes the masterpiece. It's the chimes that fall over in Fantasia, or the unfinished portrait of a soldier by Alice Neal, or Bill Burr's iconic improvised rant oh, against Billy. I hate Billy. this fucking city. I hate the way you eat, you little shitty ass fucking son. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't mind that, like down here. And the hiccups? It's these spontaneous moments that you find in pieces of creativity that remind you of how brilliant it is to be alive and human. I repeat, without pain, the old saying is there's no gain. And I found that to be true in my life. You build on failure, you use it as a stepping stone. But here's the thing about all of this. The astral yeehaw only happens if you let the hiccups happen. And man, I just had not been doing that at all. So, now to nitpick. Instead, I've been approaching songwriting with this, like, formulaic rigidity. And why? Well, it's kind of embarrassing, but I think I needed it to work. I think I had this desperation which manifested in overplanning, like obsessing over verses, pre-choruses, and a three minute 40 runtime. But uh, we all know this. Following an equation is not often a very good path to making stuff. And worse than that, it is so not country. It was time to flip the switch. Like right on what we're doing now. Yeah. Pressure's all off. And then these were like what we've done for fun as like yeah, 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 our, yeah, our yeah, brain yeah, yeah. charge, you yeah, know? Six, 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 six. We started to write. The less we fought the hiccups, the more the songs found us. Call, call, so it on. should be like, that should be like the declaration of love. Totally, you know yeah. what I mean? Love your guts, even when you drop them. I love your face, even when you're up there. I love the way you dun 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 I threw up in one of those things. If I had hair, I know someone would have to hold it back, but I didn't. And they said she's not in the coffin, man. You know what? She's where the elephants play. That's it. Where's the cat Then something really interesting happened when the pressure was completely off. The pressure was so off that Aaron wasn't even filming this. He was cooking snags. 
sausages for everyone not in Australia. But if you listen closely in the background of this shot, you can hear a song being written. It was written in less than an hour. Less than the time it takes for Aaron to talk about barbecue sauce. So good. And that song became the track. Dude, what is it? Your dad gave you magic, mine gave me bipolar. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. I was like, oh, I had this disc of bread in my hand because I immediately heard the first thing and went, oh, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon your dad gave you know what I mean? Your dad gave you magic. That's it. Your dad gave you magic, and mine gave me bipolar. We hit the studio with that mentality in hand. Where are we now compared to where we were? Uh, this is no longer country, this is Marrickville, which is very much in the city. Big smoke. Big smoke. <laughs> Joey, more slip than slap. Getting punk with it. Not playing the banjo properly, then playing the banjo properly. Gang vocals that were more gang than vocal. And just, I don't know, having fun, man. Hey Adam, is that you done for vocals? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Cam, I believe that's me done for vocals. <laughs> <laughs> done for vocals, he says. Well, time for a transition. Show me being country. Nice. Very good. The hiccups hiccup everywhere. Nice, thank you. And I think this one probably catches it best in the song. That was sick. Yeah. yeah? That was really cool. Yeah. The way you said wine into piss, I think. Yeah, there's a little slip. That's the hiccup, yeah. baby. <laughs> what did you like about that take, Adam? Cam had a nat drop. <laughs> I know it's not. Had a nat, had a nat drop. <laughs> a nat drop. What the fuck is that? His nuts dropped. Ah. Oh. I thought you meant nat, N A T. I started this video with that question. Why do we chase some goals and abandon others? And, unsatisfyingly enough, there are a million reasons. Sometimes things are just out of our control, other times it's self-sabotage. And I don't think I'm any closer to finding a universal answer. But I have realised something related. And it's arguably more important. Here goes. The goals we abandon have the power to do more for us than hitting them ever could. Failure teaches us in a way that success just doesn't. And often knowing what not to do is the best way to success. Or in weirder words, the goals we hit are astral yeehaws and the ones we give up on are the hiccups. And if writing this song is anything to go off, the hiccups, they're not the opposite of yeehaws. They're the key that unlocks them. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm often wrong. <laughs> Failure is powerful. It has the power to make us feel shame until we never want to try again. I just film Oh, fuck me. But it also has the power to make us grow more than anything else does in this world. Yeah, new take. If you've got demons in your closet, gaps in your resume and hiccups in your head, then you've also got backstage access to the rawest truths, the richest stories and whatever it is that made Dolly Parton giggle while singing about a breakup. <laughs> we can't change the fact that highs and lows are inevitable, but we can change what that means. I don't know why we make the mistakes that we do, but I do know that they make for damn good country songs. So, if I've learned anything, it's this. The more open we are with our flaws and our failures, the more open we are to what they can become. Why don't you
wine into piss I've been trying to save my money But I got nothing to show for I'm working, I'm drunk or hungover Jesus, why don't you come over? It's a Tuesday night and I'm so far from sober I blame the blood again I go work at 9am I'm working, I'm drunk or hungover Your dad gave you magic and mine gave me bipolar He sent you here to die But at least you got some closure So join me for some spilt sips Make it easy on your guilt trips We'll be working or drunk or hungover So come and bring your cup We'll fill that fucker up We'll make Noah's Ark look like a tea We'll bitch about our dads and every job we Oh, that's funny. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I like the song. <laughs>